Hello, sports fans, and welcome. Welcome to episode 239 of the Guru Talk of Sports podcast. I am your host, the Guru of Sports. Well, folks, I am not really happy. Um, the game just ended between Oregon and Ohio State. And Oregon gets the one-point victory, 32-31. I'm not happy because it seems as though that Ohio State was just flat. I mean, they just, they looked to the point where they knew they were in a big heavyweight fight with this team. This team, Oregon, is really special, really good. And I knew that when they added these four teams, UCLA, USC, Washington, and Oregon, to the Big Ten, and now I know that this is it's going to be a dogfight between Ohio State, Michigan, Oregon, Penn State, and, you know, we'll see what other team is going to come up and you know, maybe make the top five of this conference. You know, I I look at this as, you know, I I, I really I'm still kind of out to lunch on this because me I'm I'm of the old, you know, old school. You know, leave things the way they are. You know, conferences should be you know by regional you know direction, but. Look at this game last night. You know? You look at this game. It was good. I mean, it was really, really good. To see Oregon and uh, Ohio State playing in a game that meant something, you know, is is remarkable. You know, I was watching a little bit of the... uh, Penn State and USC game, and that was really good, too. You know, and they show flashbacks of uh, some of the old games, old Rose Bowl games and stuff. It's pretty, it's pretty amazing to see this. Now, Ohio State has one loss. Like I told you, you know, a couple of weeks before that when, you know, the college season started, I mentioned that there's no team that's going to be undefeated. No team's going to go undefeated. You know, Texas, and you got Oregon, you got Penn State. You know, one of these teams going to lose anyway, you know. I you know that, uh, you know, Alabama has one has a loss. You know, Ole Miss has a loss. All these teams have a loss now. When it comes down to it, you know, this twelve team this twelve team playoff is not bad. Now, you know, we'll see how it goes because, like I said, you know, I'm of the old you know regime of. You know, leave it, leave the uh, leave the conferences the way they are. But we'll see what happens. You know, we'll see. Okay, this game was up and down, big time. There was a lot of things that were going on. You know, you've seen the uh, the interception which was an interception by Oregon, and then Chip Kelly and, you know, Ryan Day were smart. They got up to the line and ran the play. That was an interception. I admit to it. That was an interception. The uh, second-half kickoff where, you know, the kicker did like almost a a pseudo-onside kick and it hit the Ohio State player, and he just, he couldn't even believe it. He jumped up, and next thing you know, tried to recover the ball, and then 
Oregon picked up the picked up the ball. Ohio State made a lot of a lot of mistakes in this game. A lot of mistakes. And the mistakes that I really seen were you know just basic uh you know I I have to say it. I have to really say it. They were dumb mistakes. I mean like off you know offsides and false starts. You know, I can understand that this place is loud. Alright, that tells me that is is you know, get my act together. Now like I said, I know that this place is loud and Oregon is you know, they they rarely loses on their home field. You know, they haven't lost in a long time in a, on their home field. But the false starts and the, uh, you know, penalties that they made, the push-off penalty by Smith, oh, gosh, they just, they killed us. They killed us with this. But, you know, like I said, you know, Ohio State, haven't seen a team like this and now we know that we have to do a little bit better to get better to face the big boys in our conference. Yeah, I still feel confident about beating Michigan. But the thing about it is that, you, you know, we have to, you know, just these, these penalties have has got to stop. These, you know, real mental penalties has to stop so that's all I gotta say about Ohio State other than that you know hey I'm not gonna you know I'm, I'm I'm upset because we lost but then again you gotta look at it this way the better team won you know I like Oregon you know Oregon is a a power you know and you know it's good to have you know I look at it this way it's good to have another uh another power in your conference that you have to beat. You know, you have to be the best. If you want to be the best, you got to be the best. You know that, that old saying. But I look at it this way. If Oregon wasn't in this conference, what else would we have to do? I mean, there's, there's been times where this Ohio State team has has uh, played games where you know they play all the teams in the in the Big Ten, and some of the teams don't have the caliber of some of the teams of the SEC or the ACC or the Big Twelve at least, you know. So now we got a monster in our conference. And what we got to do, we got to beat that monster to get to the promised land, you know? So I look at it this way. You know, it's okay. You know, one loss shouldn't put us out. But it looks like we're going to be seeing Oregon at the end to get to the conference championship. To win the conference championship and get the bye going into the college football playoff. Now, if all things hold true, Ohio State can just run the table. You know, even you know, even though they have uh, Michigan, Penn State on their you know their schedule, if they run the table and get to the uh, and where they have to meet up with Oregon again, I think it would be a pretty good game. But I'm not worried about this loss because it doesn't put us out of the playoff picture, if you know what I mean. All right, that's cool. All right, so I'm going to talk about a couple other little things. Then. But, you know, college football looks good. Very, you know, last couple of weeks in college football has been really good. You know, with uh, Texas still are, you know, 
cut above everybody else. You know, even though Alabama, they're in the same conference now with Alabama, Oklahoma, uh, Ole Miss, Georgia. This team, Texas, looked really, really good. Got a chance to watch some of the Red River rivalry. And um, they look good. I mean, they they are good. Uh, L, uh, uh, you uh, whatever, KV, uh, U, Ivers or whatever his name is, he's back. And like I said, I just looked at them and they they look they look very good. Tremendous start for the Texas Longhorns. All right, so. You know, baseball playoffs have been outstanding. I have never seen a playoff this wild, ever. You know, I have always thought that the uh, added thing about adding more teams to the playoff and everything would be uh, kind of bad. But I do kind of like it. But I do have a question about that buy. That first round buy that these teams are getting. You know, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to mean this wholeheartedly. I think what they did to the Phillies was really bad. Well, you know, I'm not going to really pounce on the Philadelphia Phillies. But the thing about it is that the buy, the buy is not. I, I just don't see this buy working. But then again, you had the Yankees make it; they had to buy. Cleveland make it; they had to buy. And the Dodgers make it; they had to buy. So now you're down to four teams. Three of them are divisional winners. The fourth one, Philadelphia. Didn't make it. I don't like that. It seems as though the best team is not in the Final Four. Yeah, it would be okay if we, you know, it was kind of chalk and all four of them could go in. But, you know, I look at it this way. I wish that, you know, all four of these, all four of these teams could have been in the in the uh in the final four but what can you say about the New York Mets oh my goodness these guys are amazing yeah amazing Mets are back just when you think you kind of killed them they're coming back they're a really good team and I really think that uh My prediction is that they had a great season, but I don't know. The Dodgers, you know, came back and did what they had to do to get back and, you know, get to the uh, uh, league championship. I slightly go with the Dodgers, but this is going to be a classic. It's going to go down to a seventh game, and I just want to see a uh, Dodger win where Otani gets to the uh, World Series for the first time. On the other hand, I would love to see Cleveland on the other hand. I know that it would be the epitome of everyone to see a Dodger Yankee World Series. But I don't think that the Yankees have it to beat Cleveland. Cleveland is just one of those teams you can't kill. Jose Ramirez is remarkable. You know, but you know, like I said, I I, I watched the uh, the game on Friday night. 
where I thought he almost broke his hand. I got to admit that Terrence Scooble is one of the best pitchers I've ever seen. The man, you know, he gave up a grand slam. First one of his career. Came right back out. You know, worked a couple of innings. And now, you know, now Detroit, who came out of nowhere, is done. But I tell you, this playoff run for Detroit was remarkable. Because, you know, at the trade deadline, they were dead. They were basically out of it. And to come back, storm back, and get into the playoff, would beat the Astros who, you know, had a perfect seven-year run going to the uh, AL Championship. They gone. They gone. <laughs> but I tell you, it's really, really nice to see uh, a couple new faces like the Guardians, the Mets, in there. Because, you know, like last year, the Dodgers took a uh, they took a little turn and didn't make it in. Or, I'm sorry, the Yankees made a turn and didn't make it in. The Dodgers are there every year. You know, you got to say, you got to remember, Dave Roberts is a great manager. He is a great manager. Now, everybody's going to say if he loses this, they need to fire him. No. I think he's going, he's okay. He's okay. What the Dodgers did the other night to beat the uh, Padres was remarkable. But then again, how can the Padres win when you don't score in 24 innings? Dodgers basically shut them out. That's why I kind of like this new system of baseball. New, uh, This new thing of baseball where, you know, the playoffs expanded, you know, three wild cards. Even though that the Orioles didn't make it, I still blame the uh, GM for not going for it at the trade deadline. Trading for a uh, a pitcher that didn't even make the uh, postseason roster. It's ridiculous. But that's the Orioles. I had to deal with them later. Later. Like maybe... Uh, next season all right but it's hockey season now we're going to talk some hockey now the utah hockey club has formed formerly the arizona coyotes and they're playing in the delta center the big big delta center and they sold out the delta center first game I actually had it on DVR. I was on the road uh, working at my beautiful job that I have. I, I have to tell you something about my job a little bit later, but uh, I'll save it. But anyway, um, Utah. Utah has a hockey club. And, you know, they beat the Boston Bruins in their first ever game. And they're undefeated right now. Only three games into the season. But they're... You know, look pretty good. Arizona Coyotes couldn't do that. You know, they were playing in a place that only held 5,000 people or so. But I think everything comes out when, you know, it, it's, it's a little bit better when it's new. A newer thing, you know. Anyway. Hockey looks pretty good. I mean, they started the hockey season uh, a couple, you know, they're doing these things right now where they have teams over in, you know, foreign countries and everything, and they start the hockey season. I think they were in Helsinki or somewhere. The, uh, the I know the Devils won a couple games, but, you know, like I said, I didn't know that, you know, they had actually started the season. 
I was looking around to see when did hockey season start. And just like, you know, I'm glad they dropped the puck and everything. But, you know, like I said, you know, I had to keep up with my Devils. I got to keep up with the, uh, the L.A. Kings. That's my team. I love the uh, Golden Knights. Only because they're new, you know. Got to have Gotta have a newness to, you know, sports and everything. Now, I'm not going to jump on the uh, Utah Hockey Club fan wagon. But I like the colors, though. Powder blue and navy blue. Not bad. They look pretty good. But, you know, like I said, I just wanted to, you know, mention the fact that hockey is back. You know, and, you know, it. I just like when they drop the puck. Love when they drop the puck. It's a good thing. Enjoy hockey. Now, WNBA is in their finals. And if you didn't watch the uh, game the other night when Minnesota came back and won, had, I mean, they were down double digits twice. Came back and won. And now they are going to try to hold that that one game uh, series lead. Now, now if they hold a series lead and they win again in New York, game comes on uh, tomorrow night at at what? uh, It's tomorrow night. You know, or tomorrow afternoon. I just don't understand why are they going to put the WNBA up against the you know football NFL. Doesn't make any sense, does it? Because you know, look at it this way: how many people are going to be watching the WNBA finals when the foot when NFL is on? And like I said, there's a uh, there's an early game tomorrow. Jacksonville's playing. I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah, it's my team. Jacksonville's playing. They're over in uh uh London. So you know I'm gonna get up and watch that. And that gives us an extra game of football. They'll have like what? They'll have they'll have uh Jacksonville on, then they have a one o'clock game, then the four o'clock game, and then the eight o'clock game. That's four football games. How are you going to match up, if, you know, through that? It's not really, really cool. You know, maybe now they're going to expand their playoffs as well. But I'm saying that this is, you know, they should be able to figure this out, have it logistically not going up against the NFL. Because, one, Let's say, like, if uh, Kaylin Clark was in there, yeah, it would be okay. But two, you can't put it on a Sunday. Maybe go up against college football. Maybe. Well, maybe the World Series or something like that. But they're going to have to figure this out because, like I said, I love watching WNBA. And believe me, I am going to catch some of this game today. But... Now, I keep saying today and tomorrow, whatever. Now, it's after 12 o'clock. And like I explained to you guys before that, sometimes I might say today or tomorrow or whatever. But, you know, after 12 o'clock, what is it considered? The next day, morning, late evening, you know, what I, I get confused about that stuff. Anyway, that's how the Google rolls. But anyway... I just wanted to say that, you know, hey, I'm definitely going to catch some of this WNBA. But the thing about it is that it's got to be, it's got to be fixed to where, you know, I can understand it going into football season, but not on the Sundays where everybody in the world are watching football and not too many people are watching the WNBA championship. I hope they can fix that. Okay, now I'll tell you what, let's finish with the NFL picks of the week. Now there's four teams on by, and I think, you know, last week was the first bye week, and this week, 
very, very nice of them to have Minnesota and Kansas City off because I'm losing one of my, play, you know, a couple of my players. And like I said, you know, I'm, I'm still in my fantasy league. I'm, you know, hanging in there. I'm hanging in there. But I'm trying to, you know, trying to maintain and stay up with the big boys. There's, you know, the guy in my division is undefeated. And I'm still trying. I'm hanging in there at two and three. So I'm not over 500 yet. My fantasy team is pretty decent. But, you know, it's been hit with a lot of injuries. And now with these bye weeks coming up, you never know what's going to happen. All right, so four teams on by this week. Kansas City, the Rams, Miami, or Minnesota, Miami, oh, who is that? Miami and Minnesota. That's right, Miami and Minnesota. Because I do have uh, most Moster on my team, and I don't know why, because he hasn't really done anything for me. But, you know, I got... Justin Jefferson, he's on by. Kareem Hunt, he's on by. So, fantasy teams, you know, fantasy is fantasy. All right, so Guru now is eight and seven. Uh, Fifteen picks for the year, eight and seven. I'm over five hundred, but you know the Guru's always right. So you know he's all you know, fifteen and up. Anyway, so let's get to these uh, picks. I'm gonna pick five games this week. You know. Jive five or whatever I call it or whatever. So I'm gonna give you these five picks and uh let's see what we go with. Alright, first one is Tampa Bay versus New Orleans. New Orleans uh Derek Carr is out and uh we don't know what's going on with him. And Tampa Bay still looks pretty good. You know I'm not a big Baker Mayfield fan, but I think that that, that this team can move the football and you know, take care, dominate a little bit of New Orleans because they're hurt. Now, Tampa Bay is a three and a half point favorite. The over under is 42 and a half. So let's go with Tampa Bay in this situation. Okay. Philadelphia is an eight point favorite versus Cleveland. And over under there is 42 and a half. And Philadelphia is rested. They're off the bye. They're coming back. A.J. Brown should be back. Devontae Smith should be back. And, yes, I am going with Philadelphia. All right. So, Detroit versus Dallas. This is a hard one because Detroit comes in as a three-and-a-half point favorite. And the over-under is 52-and-a-half. Now, last week was something really, really funny. Or kind of, you know, they had a big delay out in Pittsburgh. And this game started on Sunday night. It ended on like maybe almost close to one o'clock or midnight, and you know the next day, which is what I was talking about. Next day, if it was midnight or whatever, whatever. But anyway, uh, Dak Prescott threw an interception in Sunday and Monday, and he also threw a touchdown in Sunday and Monday. So you know it's just basically, you know, one of those things where hey. Two different days. He threw a freaking touchdown, you know. Anyway, so I do like Detroit. Give me the three and a half points on that one. Okay, Cincinnati and the New York Giants. Sunday night football. Cincinnati is a three and a half point favorite. Over under is 46 and a half. I, you know what? I still like Cincinnati. I'm not sure about this Giants team. They have won some uh, amazing games, and we didn't, you know, without Malik McNabor, so we'll see. I'm still going with Cincinnati. And the fifth pick is uh, Washington versus Baltimore. Baltimore is a seven-point favorite. Over-under is 51.5, and, and I think I'm going to – I like Jaden Daniels. Now, he, now Jaden Daniels is awesome because he's on my fantasy team, and I really like this kid. He's really good. I think he should be okay. But I'm I'm gonna take Baltimore in this situation. Baltimore is really battle tested. You know, I gotta go with my hometown, you know. 
Give me Baltimore, a seven-point favorite. All right, so Tampa Bay, Philadelphia, Detroit, Cincinnati, and Baltimore. Those are my, my five picks. Okay, now let me tell you a little story about my uh, my job. My job is wonderful. It's, it's really, really good. It's really, I love it. I love what I do. I love the people that I work with. And like I said, you know, it's really, really cool. Now, we had our annual safety meeting yesterday. This was Saturday. And it was shocking because I was like looking at, you know, board and they had numbers up there. And I was like looking and I was like, wait a minute. Well, one of those numbers is mine. Yeah, okay. Well, so I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, hmm, what are they doing with these numbers? So... They had it like a uh, lottery or you know, spin the wheel thing. And they spin the wheel and they said, okay, uh, one guy uh, is uh, going to win a prize and then the next guy is going to win the grand prize. All right. So it's cool. We'll see. So they spin the wheel and uh, my buddy, uh, guy that I work with, you know, we're in the same area. He, he went, he wins. I was like, hey, that's pretty cool. So, next thing you know, take his number out, and then next thing you know, there's five numbers up there. My number is still up there. And next thing you know, they spin the wheel. And it's ticking, 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 ticking. And my number is coming around. It's ticking again, ticking, ticking, tick, 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 tick. It stops on my number. And I'm like, what just happened here? I was surprised. I was really surprised. Because usually I don't, you know, I don't I don't win anything. You know, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's winning something, whatever. So I won the grand prize. And um, I'm thankful. I'm grateful. I really am. Because, you know, when... Like I explained to you guys before, is that when you do something that you really enjoy, it's not work. You know, doing what you what you love to do is never work. Being able to go somewhere every single day and uh, enjoy the company and just being able just to do what you can do, it's not work. You know, I've learned to love this job because, well, you know, I'm not going to say job, this career, because, you know, they gave me a chance. You know, a lot of places wouldn't give me a chance. And it makes, it makes me feel like, hey, you know, I had to show and prove. I had to get out there and I had to, you know, excuse the expression, bust ass and make sure that, you know, I do what I'm doing the right way. And I really appreciate what they do for me. You know, like I said, I um, have good rapport with everyone. I respect everyone, and everyone respects me. And I think that when you are in a situation where you uh, like the place that you work, you enjoy just doing what you do. All right. But anyway, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for listening to this podcast. Thank you for uh, tuning in every week. And thank you for you know, checking me out. Now, you know I have a very, very special heart place in my heart for number 39. Now, like I said, you can follow me on Twitter at Goat39. You can follow me on Instagram at Guru39. So, other than that, I'm going to say good night, good morning, and, you know, like I said, we're right in the middle of after midnight so you guys take care and like i said just today today whatever guys take care i'll talk to you soon later